story time about how my husband's mistress tried to mace me and kidnap me. This clearance is not my story time. My husband and I have been married for four months. So yeah, not very long. We dated for two years and everything was pretty much okay. At the beginning of the relationship, I had my doubts about him. I earn a lot more money than he does and he's always resented me for that. He makes comments and jokes about how I'm the one that brings the bacon home. Finally, I told him that he needed to stop doing that, especially in front of our friends and family. But other than that, we've had a really great relationship. I never thought that he was capable of ever cheating on me. We finally got married back in 2017. The wedding was so special and our families were there. Our honeymoon was amazing and when we got back home, we both decided that we wanted to buy a house together. Or mostly like I decided to buy a house and he would give me some money. Obviously this didn't bother me because I knew it was our forever home, so I didn't mind paying for it and having him help me with the rest. After we settled into our new home, my husband decided that he wanted to get a better paying job. Obviously this made me really happy because it would give him more confidence if he was earning more money. He decided to switch to financing and he started working on Wall Street. Two months after getting married, he started earning way more money than I did. This made him so happy, but he quickly started to change. He only bought expensive designer stuff. One thing I did notice was that he never invited me to go to his office. So like the good wife I am, I decided to surprise him at his office with lunch. And when I got there, I was greeted by his assistant. I didn't get worried because I didn't find her very attractive. She looked very plain Jane and homely. But when I finally saw my husband, I asked him why he didn't tell me that he finally got his assistant. He told me that he just forgot and he didn't think it was important. So I let it go. But I noticed that his assistant was trying to be oh lucky to be married to my husband and how I should be more grateful to him. Obviously, I took offense. I went straight to my husband and told him what his assistant said to me. That's when my husband laughed it off and said that I was reading into it. Two seconds later, he's in his office with her yelling at her. Part two is up. That's when I catch my husband yelling at his assistant. All I could make out was that he was telling her to keep her mouth shut when she was around me. Obviously, these were all red flags. I decided not to say anything for the rest of the night, but his assistant kept drinking the entire night. That's when my husband pulled her aside and told her to go home. She started crying and she tried to hold his hand. And that's when I knew it. They were having an affair. Mind you, I didn't suspect anything. I just thought she wasn't very pretty. She was very plain Jane. I didn't think that my husband would ever find her attractive. After she left the party, I decided to pull my husband aside and ask him what was going on. I asked him if he was having an affair with her, and he told me the truth. He said yes. Obviously, this was really heartbreaking. We hadn't been married long. That's when he told me that he wanted independence from me because I was the one that paid for everything, and that he wanted to feel like a man, and that because I earned more money and paid for everything, he felt less of a man. Wow, great excuse. He promised to break things off because he had no feelings for her, and that he actually felt bad for using her because she was falling in love with him. I told him that he needed to fire her right away. The following day, he fired her. But she shows up at our doorstep. But of course, my husband wasn't home. As soon as I open the door and see that it's her, she pulls out pepper spray and sprays me in the face. I fall to the floor and she grabs me by my ankles and drags me to her car. She was like scary strong. She opened up her trunk door and actually tried to pull me inside, but she couldn't lift me. Luckily, one of my neighbors was there and started yelling at her to leave me alone. That's when she got in her car and drove off. The police pulled her over two miles away. In her car, she had a shovel and an axe. She told the cops that she was planning on aliving me so that she could stay with my stupid husband. She went to jail and my husband and I are still together. Should I get a divorce? I Am I the asshole for not allowing my ex-husband's girlfriend to wear my wedding dress? I, 35 female, have been divorced from my 41 male husband for three years. We have one son together. My ex, we will call him K, started dating another woman. We will call her G. K and I have a great relationship with each other. We still love each other as friends. K started dating G about 10 months ago. G and I have become really great friends and enjoy being around each other. Everything seemed to be going great until the other day. G and K have started talking about marriage. I know K is really hesitant, but G really wants to get married and have children of her own. I guess G saw some old pictures of me in my wedding dress and has been raving about how pretty my dress is. The other day we had coffee together and G brought up getting married soon. I told her how happy I was for her. Things changed though when she asked if she could wear my wedding dress. I was really shocked she even asked. I immediately told her that I was flattered, but no. She immediately got extremely pouty and started to ask why. I explained that I wasn't comfortable with her wearing my dress to marry my ex-husband. She got really upset and started to cause a scene. I walked out knowing that she wasn't going to calm down. About an hour later, my ex-husband called asking what happened. When I told him, he completely understood and was on my side, but it didn't end there. G has been having her friends and family call me at my work calling me an asshole for not sharing. G is claiming that I'm not over K and that I'm just doing this to ruin her wedding. While it's true that I'm not over Kay, a part of me just doesn't feel comfortable having her wear my dress. This whole argument has really put a strain on my ex's and I's relationship and the relationship around my son. Part of me feels like I should give in, but I still don't feel comfortable with it. So am I the asshole for not letting her wear my dress? Am I the asshole for refusing to babysit for my sister and leaving her without anyone to watch her kids? I'm 18 female, still in high school, paralyzed. My mom is 45, my sister is 28, and has three boys, ages 10, 6, and 3. 
Four years ago, I was in a car accident and came out paralyzed from the waist down. It has been hell having to learn a new way of life, but I haven't let that stop me. I'm going to be going to college out of state next year and graduating in the top 10% in my school if things continue as they are. The one major thing that is a complete bummer out of all of this, other than the obvious, is that my mom thinks I'm a free babysitter for whenever one of my older brothers or sister needs one. She never consults me on these things and expects me to drop my plans at the drop of a hat. This past Monday, I told my parents about a Christmas movie extravaganza sleepover my friend has been planning. It's going to be three girls and we're planning on making brownies, cookies, watching really cheesy Christmas-themed romantic movies, and just girl stuff. It was on a Saturday, and my parents said they had no problem with it. Yesterday arrived, and I'm just about to roll out when my mom comes and says my sister's on her way with her three boys. Apparently, she asked if I could babysit the other day, and she said yes. Didn't even bother telling me about it. I said hell no because I already have plans. We fought and my mom ended up storming off because this is the one time I wasn't backing down. I took the time and left, turning my phone off when I got into my friend's car. Today when I got home, I got called an immature asshole basically. My sister was left without anyone to watch the kids during her husband's work Christmas party. I went back on my word that I didn't make. Mom told me that I should be grateful that she gives me something to look forward to. Babysitting because I have no real social life being paralyzed. I just went up to my room and cried. But now I'm wondering, am I the asshole like they say I am because I refused to babysit and left my sister in the lurch? November last year, I gave birth to our first baby. It's the first in my family and the sixth in my husband's family. It's important to say that all six kids are boys and my mother-in-law is in some sick, crazy girl phase. Ever since we made the announcement, my mother-in-law convinced herself that I was pregnant with a girl. I told her that once we knew the gender, she'd be the first person to know. Lo and behold, it was a boy. We told my mother-in-law we were having a boy, but she was still convinced it was a girl. She told the whole side of the family that it was a girl, and I corrected her, but she told them I was just annoyed because I wanted a boy first. I wanted a healthy baby. I didn't give a damn about the sex. She told them that we are naming the girl after her mom, which we will never do because my hubby hates his grandma. When the baby shower gift started to come, I noticed a lot of things that wasn't in the register, like embroidered things with the grandma's name on it. Well, the baby was born, and imagine the surprise, it was a boy, just like we have been telling everyone. The problem, for them at least, is that now the baby has plenty of girl clothes that we plan on putting on our son, specifically for his family video calls and for pictures with them. After Saturday, my mother-in-law gave us a call and started screaming because we were making the elders uncomfortable for not sticking to a masculine color scheme for the baby's clothes. She said we have to stop being childish. She just thought my belly shape was more like a girl than for a boy. I told my mother-in-law that we will not be changing the baby's clothes and just to wait until the dresses start fitting. He will look adorable. Am I wrong for breaking my promise to my husband and letting others meet our newborn before him? Mmm, this has already gave me red flag vibes. This is giving me manipulator vibes, but let's let's keep going. I, 25 female, moved away from my hometown to my husband's hometown, male 32, after we got married. The main reason is because he suffers from a medical chronic condition and needs to be near his family. Oh, red flag number two. I was pregnant with our first baby and was nearing my due date when my husband had to travel out of town for two weeks. Because of this, he couldn't be with me in the delivery room, which wasn't expected. I wanted to ask my mom to come with me, but he assured me that his family is there to help and I shouldn't be worried. Red flag number three. He then made me promise that I don't let anyone see our son for the first time in person before him besides his stepmom who was supposed to be there for me and I agreed. Oh my god, what, what red flag are we on? I lost count. His stepmom was with me when I went into labor, but she stayed away since she is the type that doesn't get too involved and keeps her distance. She's also the I don't do diapers type, meaning she doesn't offer help with the baby and I shouldn't be expecting it. She dropped me and my son off at home and asked that I only call if there's an emergency. I felt helpless. I asked my neighbor for a few favors but needed real help with the baby, so I called my mom and asked if she could come help me with the baby. She drove four hours to come stay with me. She helped out tremendously and I'm so grateful for that. My husband stayed away for a few more days then came home. One once he saw my mom, he got so upset repeatedly saying I broke the promise that I made to him by not letting others meet our son before him. I tried to explain that I needed the help and he brought up his stepmom, but I replied that she dropped me off and left. That's it. He said it wasn't about mom since it could have been anybody else, but it was about me disrespecting his wishes and breaking the promise I made. Oh, what the? Let me let me zoom in, let me zoom in for this shit. He reminded me that he's also the parent and he gets to say too. At this point, I said he was overreacting, but he replied that I forever tainted the memory of his son's birth and broke his trust and proved to him that my word is worth shit now. What red flag were we on? Someone remind me. Mom tried to give us space, but I said she did nothing wrong. She came to help after his stepmom left, so I can't be blamed for asking for help. He told me to stop giving him excuses and admit I wronged him with what I did and then started avoiding me and just kept focusing his attention on our son. He keeps acting cold towards me, calling me a selfish promise breaker and expecting me to make it up to him. He wanted an apology, but I haven't given him that yet. So am I wrong here? Holy shit. Uh, the only answer to this is divorce. 
nothing else. Run away. This is not the man for you. No one, no one deserves to be talked to like that. Especially after you pushed out his baby and he wasn't even motherfucking there. I'm a stay-at-home mom and my husband works full-time. We have three kids and one of them is two years old. My husband helps a lot with the kids. He's a committed dad but is absolutely against babysitters due to an awful incident with a babysitter that was the reason his younger male cousin James got disabled years ago. I don't go out much since I have to take the kids with me and not every place is suitable for kids. We received an invitation from our brothers, who's been my husband's best friend since college, wedding, which we later discovered was child-free. My brother lives states away so the entire trip will take four days as well as my brother's in-laws weekend dinner party. I told my husband that I want to go since it's been a while since I went to a wedding and this one is special and suggested that we get a trusted friend as a babysitter. He asked if I was serious to consider leaving our two-year-old with a babysitter and suggested that I do what I normally do and stay home with the kids while he goes to the wedding. I refused and said I have as much right to attend as him since we were both invited. He said it wasn't his fault that my brother wants a child-free wedding and I should do this for the kids and sacrifice for their sake. I still refused and said it was unfair and since he's a parent too then he should stay also for the kids. He looked at me and said, that's my best friend's wedding you're asking me to skip for Christ's sake. Are you kidding me? Then said I was being petty for suggesting this and I was basically choosing to go to a party over keeping our kids safe. He asked me to consider this a business trip, what I would do. Go with him and leave the kids? I said I understand his paranoia of babysitters, but really, all my friends have sitters and at times they're really needed. He said I ought to know better than what my friends tell me and this wasn't enough for discussion. When I kept arguing, he called me selfish and said he won't let me ruin this relationship with his friend because I was being spiteful for not being able to attend and that my brother will understand my situation. He keeps asking who's more important, a wedding party or my kids, and said I was being unreasonable for making my attendance a hill to die on. Am I the asshole for refusing to stay home with the kids while my husband attends my brother's wedding? Okay, so here's a little story time, but it's a little TMI. So I'm really sensitive to like smells. If I smell bad, I know it. And if other people smell bad, I know it. And it bothers me so much. So I was filming a movie in Waco, Texas, and everything was fine. But a few days into the shoot, I started noticing that my armpits were smelling like rotten fruit. It's hard to describe how I smell. I can only compare it to guava. <laughs> It bothered me so much the next day I went to wardrobe and started sniffing all the clothes that I had worn the day before and it all smelled like guava. So I went and picked up the Kopari deodorant. This is a coconut deodorant and it smells so good. When I was doing my research, I realized that this is like skincare for your armpits and I use skincare on my face and my body. Why don't I do it on my armpits? It's also free of aluminum baking soda and it's 100% plant-based. I don't smell like guava anymore, thank God. If you have any embarrassing um, BO story times, let me know in the comments because I don't want to be the only one. <laughs> story time about how my boyfriend cheated on me with a 17 year old girl. So when summer started, I started working at this new job and I had a really good connection with one of my coworkers and he was 28 years old. So we started talking, but I would get mad at him a lot because he would ignore my messages asking to hang out. And on top of that, every time that we got done with work, we would all go sit and meet and he would sit next to this one girl. And by the way, she was 17. And I could see them flirting all the time. Well, finally, once summer ended, she moved away. And then I felt like I had a real chance to start dating him. So we started hanging out a lot and hooking up a lot. After a few months, I started taking our relationship serious. Well, apparently not for him because there was this girl on his phone that he had been texting a lot. So weirdly enough, after that, I get a DM from the girl that he would always flirt with at work. And she asked me if I was dating him. And I said, yeah. And then she goes, oh, well, he's been texting me a lot. So then I blocked her and went and hooked up with one of his friends that night, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend was cheating on me with a 17-year-old girl. So like I said, I hooked up with his friend that night, but I didn't tell him for a couple months because he would always say that we weren't dating, even though we were basically in a relationship. So we were doing really good until around Christmas time. So after he gave me my gifts, which was socks and a candle, he left for Massachusetts. I don't know if I said that right. And a month before this, I had unblocked the girl that he was flirting with. So weirdly enough, after he left, she DM'd me, basically asking if I was still dating him again. And I was like, yeah, why? And she goes, hmm, well, I need to tell you something. He actually took my virginity and he's been sending me a lot of gifts like a record player and albums. And we've been talking on the phone every night. So when I confronted him about it, he said he felt bad for her because he took her virginity. So after that, I confessed to hooking up with his best friend and called him a child predator. Crazy story time about how I found my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So every year, my mom and stepdad would have a Christmas party and everyone from both sides of the family would come. And I also invited my boyfriend. And at this time, my boyfriend and I were both juniors in high school. So everybody came to the party and everything was going good. Well, like an hour into the party, all the adults were super drunk. 
So before we all opened gifts, I decided to help my mom clean up dinner. So while I'm washing the dishes, I look over and my aunt and boyfriend are talking a lot. And she started to get really touchy with him, but I didn't think anything of it because she was super drunk. So after I'm done cleaning up, we all start opening gifts. And my boyfriend goes up to my room to go get his phone off the charger. And after he went upstairs, my aunt was like, oh, I need to go throw up. So about 10 minutes goes past and my boyfriend's still up in the room grabbing his phone. So I went to check on him. And I walk upstairs to see my aunt and my boyfriend laying on my bed making out. Like for part two. Part two to how I caught my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So like I said, they are laying on my bed making out. Doors wide open. They don't even bother to shut the door. And both of their shirts are off. And I think I should just put in here, my aunt is like 28. She's on my stepdad's side. She's really young. So they look up and my aunt's just like drunk as fuck looking at me. And she's like, do you want to join? Like, bitch, what the fuck? So I'm just like shook. And I start screaming. Everybody rushes up the stairs. And my mom pushes me out of the way and sees my boyfriend and my aunt laying on my bed with their shirts off. So my mom starts screaming at everybody. So my mom calls the cops, says that an adult is touching an underage boy. And she calls his mom, tells her what happened. So my boyfriend and I broke up. So that spread around the whole school. And word got out that they actually started seeing each other. Story time about how I woke up to my best friend having a seizure. A little background information. So my close friend invited me over to his house to spend the night. And we're gonna call him Jay. Well, Jay and I got to his house and his parents were really strict so he had to sneak me in. So he told me to wait by the garage. And as soon as he opens the front door to his house, I hear his parents screaming. So he's inside fighting with his parents. I'm outside freezing my ass off. So an hour later, he comes out to get me, walks me through the garage, and I have to hide in this crawl space. So while I'm hiding in this crawl space, him and his parents are still arguing. And his parents walk past where I was like five times. So his mom gets in the car and leaves. She said she was going to kill herself. His dad comes into the garage, starts crying. I literally witnessed him have a mental fucking breakdown. Then his mom came back, said that she hated everybody. So then Jay purposely bangs his head off of the kitchen table two times. So when he came into the garage to get me, he had a nice pack on his head. Then we stuck up to his room like for part two. Part two. So like I said, he rushes me up to his room because his dad was in the basement and his mom left again, threatening to kill herself again. And while we're upstairs, he starts taking dabs and we're up for a little bit and then we go to sleep. So at like 8 in the morning, we both wake up. He's on his phone, I'm on my phone, we're not facing each other. And then all of a sudden, I feel the bed start to shake, like a lot. So I turn over and this kid is having a full-blown fucking seizure. Like he's foaming at the mouth, his eyes are literally rolling in the back of his fucking head. So I get up and roll him over onto his side because I didn't want him to start choking. And I'm fucking freaking out and don't know what to do because I wasn't even supposed to be there in the first place. And he's like making all these types of noises. So I go and I run down the hallway. I try to find his parents' room and I open the door and have to wake them up dead out of their sleep. And I was like, um, your son's having a seizure. So his mom runs over to the room and his dad's like, well, who the fuck are you? And why the fuck are you in my house? And I was like, your son told me that I could stay the night last night. Oh, like for part three. Part three. So like I said, his dad's like interrogating me right now. So they call an ambulance. His son leaves in the ambulance. They didn't go with him. And his dad's like, you're never allowed in this fucking house again. And then he asked me, did he take anything last night? And I'm like, he did dabs, but like I didn't do anything because I don't do that stuff. So he goes over to where all of his dab stuff is and starts throwing the glass pieces in the garbage, making sure that he fucking breaks them all. And his mom comes over to me to comfort me because I'm literally like fucking crying because this kid almost died right next to me. And she's like, it's okay, sweetie. Like this happens to him a lot. But I felt so uncomfortable because he was like making it seem like it was my fault. So I hurry up and call my mom and my mom doesn't get there till like 30 minutes because their house is a little bit further away. And for all of you wondering what happened to him, I don't know because this happened this morning. Part two. And I was able to get into his phone because he sold my fingerprint from when we were best friends. So I unblocked myself on all social medias. And there was an ottoman pushed against the couch. So while he was sleeping, I was able to go lay next to him. So while I was laying next to him, I took a few pictures of us. And I saved them in his camera roll. And I also sent one to his girlfriend. And it was about one in the morning. Well, she opened it right away and then she started going off and would not stop calling his phone. So after that, I turned his phone off. So he started to wake up and then we started drinking more. And then we started fooling around. 
And while we were doing the nasty, I took a video. But he didn't see it because the phone was in front of me. And I had his girlfriend on Snapchat. So what did I do? I sent the motherfucking video to her. So the next day, obviously, he found out what happened. So then he came over to my house to talk to me. And I told him how I was upset that she was keeping him from me. So he broke up with her and started dating me. Story time about how my boyfriend was cheating on me with my stepsister. So a little background information, my mom remarried whenever I was in 8th grade, and my stepdad had two daughters, one which was my age and we got along really well. Well before my sisters and I went back to school, my mom wanted to go on a camping trip with everyone, and my boyfriend was coming because he was really close with my family. So while my stepsister and I are packing up, she starts acting really weird, and we're gonna call my boyfriend Kevin. She was like, oh is Kevin still coming with us? And I was like, yeah. And then she goes, oh are you and Kevin still together? And I'm like, we were never broken up, like the fuck? Like I said, she was just being super fucking weird. But anyways, we all get in the car, we drive up there and her and Kevin start being super weird around each other. Like they were being too touchy. Anytime that I wanted to go do something with Kevin, she would say, oh, Kevin, you can come do this instead. Well, that night, Kevin and I are sleeping in our tent. At least I thought he was. And I wake up to some loud noises in the other tent, like for part two. Story time about how I tried to get my boyfriend back for cheating on me, but I ended up with an STD instead. So a little background information. I was dating this guy for about seven months whenever I was in high school. And I would always hang out with him, his guy friends, and their girlfriends. Well, the one night we were hanging out at my house and he kept checking my phone. And he said it was because he was waiting for his mom to text my phone. So then he had to go to the bathroom and he asked to take my phone with him. And I said no because that's weird as fuck. So while he's in the bathroom, I get a text from a random number. And it's a bunch of videos that my boyfriend took of him doing the nasty with other girls. And there were like 15 videos, all different girls. So by this time, he's been in the bathroom for like 15 minutes. So I go to confront him while he's in the bathroom. Like, I do not care at this point. And he's gone. My bathroom window is wide open. My curtains are broken. So then I start to text all of his best friends. Like for part two. Part two. So it turns out the person who sent it to me was one of the girls in my friend group. So at that point, every single person in that friend group was dead to me and I needed to get every single one of them back. So like I said, I started texting all my ex's best friends and I asked every single one of them if they wanted to hook up. Four of them said yes, the other three just blocked me. And the four who said yes all had girlfriends in our friend group. Well, the girls in my friend group had no idea so they invited me to their party. And at that party, it was my mission to do the dirty with every single one of those guys. Well, there was this bathroom in the basement, which nobody knew about except the girl whose house it was. So one after the other, I did the dirty with every single one of them in that bathroom. And I made sure to snap a picture or take a video. So that way I could send it to my boyfriend. I know, I'm crazy, get over it. Well, in the morning, my ex's closest best friend came over. Well, I did the dirty with him too, because my ex hated him being around me, because he was known for screwing other people's girlfriends. Okay, there's gonna be a part three. On the take, shed a little light on it. You know, a buddy ain't a ghost. The only path to love is trust. I'll always know that all that's proper amounts too much. Let out my thought, let that hell up, it down. There's no master. Help will surely come around I don't act I don't math in the glory of love this story time is how I caught my uncle filling on my cousin, in other terms, his daughter. So, when I was 11, my cousin was throwing a party, then afterwards, a sleepover. By the way, we're calling her Adrian, and she was turning 13. So, the day of the party, me and my other sister were dropped off by my dad. We were dropped off very early, maybe five hours before the party, and that's because he had to go to work, and my uncle didn't mind taking us all together to the party. Plus, we got to help them set up for the party. When we arrived, we went to Adrian's room, and she got her hair done. It looked so good. When we were talking to her, she just seemed so sad. And you know when you're younger, you can tell when things are off. She seemed bratty, and she would say that she hated her mom and her dad. To me, I'm like, why? She had the perfect life. Fast forward, she throws the party, and when it's all over, we go back to her house for the slumber party. We ate snacks, played games, watched movies till we fell asleep. I'm a light sleeper. And when everyone was asleep, my uncle came in the living room, tapped on Adrian's shoulder, and told her she gotta go to sleep in her bed tonight. Let me know if I... This is part two of how I caught my uncle touching on my cousin. In other terms, his daughter. So early before, I told you guys everyone went to sleep. 
We were all asleep in the living room floor in front of the TV, and my uncle tapped on Adrian, telling her that she needed to sleep in her bed tonight. I'm a light sleeper, and I was woke the whole time. Adrian was still asleep, so my uncle picked her up and took her to her room. I was confused on why she had to go to sleep in her room because everyone was asleep downstairs. So 15 minutes passed. I'm still waiting there bored. I don't know what came to me, but I was just curious to see if Adrian was up. I mean, she might have been because I would have woke up if I was switched to a new room. I don't know. I just went up. When I got upstairs, I opened the door. Adrian was asleep, but she was completely naked and my uncle was sitting right next to her, touching on her. I'm out of time. Let me know if I should make a part three. This is part three of how I caught my uncle touching on my cousin, in other terms, his daughter. Like I said, I couldn't sleep, so I went upstairs to see if Adrian was up. When I opened up the door, Adrian was asleep, but she was naked, and my uncle was touching on her. I got scared and was about to run downstairs, but he ran after me, covered up my mouth, and sat me back down in the room. I started crying, and he said if I didn't shut up, he was going to beat me, so I shut right up. In the midst of it all... When he was standing up, I didn't notice before, but he had on no pants. I started sniffling, and the noise I was making had woke Adrian up. She looked at me, then looked at herself and saw that she had on no clothes. She jumped back and immediately wrapped herself up in a blanket. I started crying again, and my uncle said, If you don't shut up, girl, I'm going to smack you. Then Adrian yelled at him and said, Don't hurt her. And immediately, he popped her and said, What I tell you about talking back? And from there, Adrian just sat there frozen, touching her face, and I shut right up. This is part three of how I caught my uncle touching on my cousin, in other terms, his daughter. And I had to remake this because TikTok took down my video that I made yesterday. Like I said yesterday, I couldn't sleep, so I went upstairs to see if Adrian was up. When I opened the door, Adrian was asleep, but she was naked, and my uncle was on her. I got scared and was about to run downstairs, but he ran after me and sent me back down in the room. I started crying, and he said if I didn't shut up, he was going to do something to me, so I shut right up. In the midst of it all, he was standing up, and I didn't know this before, but he had on no pants. I started sniffling, and the noise I was making had woke Adrian up. She looked at me and looked and saw that she had on no clothes she jumped back and wrapped herself up in a blanket i started crying again and my uncle said if i don't shut up he was gonna do something bad to me and adrian yelled and said don't touch her and immediately my uncle popped her and said what i tell you about talking back and from there adrian just sat there frozen touching her face and i shut right up it gets bad after this let me know if you guys want to part four this is part four, four. I called my uncle touching my cousin in other terms his daughter so after my uncle popped adrian she got real quiet then out of nowhere she said it burst out crying my uncle was trying to tell her to be quiet, but she just got louder. I don't know what it was, but as soon as I saw her crying, I started crying too. Immediately, Adrian's mom bust in the room asking what's going on. My uncle was trying to convince her that everything was okay. She grabbed Adrian and saw that she was naked. Adrian's mom started to get upset. At this point, everyone was waking up. She took both me and Adrian out of the room and yelled at my uncle, telling him to throw his clothes on and go. We went to the bathroom and she asked us questions. I told her what I saw and Adrian told her everything, even things I didn't even heard about. It seemed like her mom had speculations that this was all going on and her mom started crying. Towards the end, I really don't know what they did afterwards. I told my dad and from there, me and my sister was never allowed over my cousin's house and I haven't seen her in eight years. This story time is how I found out my toxic ex-best friend pretended to be a guy so she could date me. In other words, I was catfish. So back in February when the coronavirus first started out, everyone had to stay home. My best friend at the time was for calling Tina or the brother had caught the virus and I felt bad for the family because they could also be infected. Me, on the other hand, I live with my older sister who recently had my niece and my two grandparents. I, I told Tina the only way we'd be able to talk was through phone and call and text messages. Because I was afraid that she would infect me and I would infect my family. As weeks go by, she tells me that she misses me and of course I miss her also. At one point, she starts to get jealous because I start texting other people. And from there, I started to distance myself, but not purposely. One day, I got a DM from this really cute guy, which we're calling Bryson. He came up with a corny line, but I thought it was cute. He was really nice and we talked as though we knew each other for years. As the number of cases of coronavirus go down, I tell him we should go on a date. Guys, this is when it gets weird. This is part two of how I found out my toxic ex-best friend pretended to be a guy so she could date me. So after we talked for about four months, I tell him that we should go out and finally meet face to face. He's like, I don't know yet. If I go somewhere, I'd like to take you somewhere really nice. So I might have to save up. I was like, we don't need to do anything fancy. I just want to finally meet you. He's like, I need more time. So 
So I was patient and waited a whole month. I told him, let's meet. He's like, I'm not ready yet. And I said, if we don't go out this weekend, then I'm done talking to you. So he finally agreed to go to the movie theater with me. When we finally meet, I was so surprised because he was short. I expected him to be taller by now. His pictures looked like he was taller. He had a black hoodie on and his face was partially covered up. I was like, are you good? His voice was raspy. He says he lost his voice. When the movie was over, we got up and left the theater. When it was time to leave, we gave hugs, and he kissed me. As he's hugging me, I feel breath. It gets really weird after this. Part 3 will be up soon. This is part 3 of how I found out my toxic best friend pretended to be a guy so she could date me. So after the movie was over, we stepped outside, and I said goodbye. He hugs and kisses me, and I immediately feel breasts. I'm like, what the? And it pushes him away, and his hoodie flew off. Well, her hoodie flew off. I found out that this guy was my best friend, Tina. I'm like, what the hell, Tina? Why are you here? She's like, I'm so sorry. I asked her again, why are you here? She then explains to me that she pretended to be the guy I was talking to because she wanted to get closer to me. I was freaked out because I thought I was talking to someone else this whole time for five months. I got so wrapped up over this guy that didn't even exist and told things to that I never told anyone. But then I got so disgusted because I couldn't believe my own best friend would do that. And I feel like if we never met, I probably would still be talking to this fake man. At the end, I completely blocked her and stopped being her friend. Story time of the most dirtiest college roommate ever. By the way, we're calling her Jessie. So I moved in before Jessie and I get settled and decorate. The next day, she comes and throws her bag on the bed, then leaves. I thought it was weird because she didn't even say anything to me. Couple hours later, she comes back and I'm like, uh, hello. And she's like, my bad, and comes giving me a hug. She smelled very bad. She starts unpacking all of her clothes and blankets, but they smell like mildew. Anyways, a week later, there's this party going on for freshmen, and she goes, but I stay in because I had a migraine. I told her that when she comes back, can she keep the light off? Now it's 2 a.m., and she comes back in very loud, uses the bathroom, then goes to sleep. And now I'm up, so I got up to use the bathroom too. When I sit down on the toilet, I feel something very squishy. It was dark because, like I said, I had a migraine. I get up, turn the light on, and I was sitting in her shit. This story of time is about how my boyfriend exposed my nudes to everyone at school. By the way, we're calling him Keith. So, I've built my boyfriend Keith for four months. He seemed pretty cool and chill and very outgoing. He played basketball and was very popular in school. So, when he started talking to me, I felt very special. But, as time went by, he wasn't the guy who I thought he was. He was pretty self-entitled, cocky, and it got annoying. He expected everything to be handed to him. Anyway, throughout the relationship, he'd always ask for nudes, but I always tell him no because I'm not that type of girl to send any guy nudes. He'd always get mad at me and say couples are supposed to do that type of stuff, but I didn't give in. I'd always take pictures of myself because I liked my body, but I would never send them to anyone. One day, Keith comes over to my house. We chill for a little bit, and then my mom had called me. And then when I had came back, I saw him on my phone. When I snatched my phone from him, he sent the pictures that I took of myself and sent them to his phone. It get really reckless after this. This is part two of how my boyfriend exposed my nudes to everyone in school. So after Keith snuck into my phone and sent my nudes to himself, I got mad at him and told him to delete them. He tries to justify why he should keep them, but I say no because they were private. So then he shows me he's deleting them. After that, I kicked them out of my house for invading my privacy. Next day, I get ready for school. I text my boyfriend good morning as usual, but he didn't respond, which I thought was weird. When I get to school, everyone is staring at me. One of the basketball players at my school came up to me and said, you're wild. I was like, what? When I get to class, one of the girls sitting in front of the class said, girl, you're bold, and I'm still confused. When I sat down at my seat and I opened up my phone, I went through Snapchat, watching everyone's stories, and I saw my nudes on one of Keith's friends' story. After this, it gets terrible. We can do everything as long as I am with you. I believe I can fly. the right one's fell